Hello, this is Mike Swanson of uh, Wall Street Window. I'm watching Jerome Powell talk right now. I'm seeing the comments people make. People in this chat are saying, he wants to crush the portfolios. We're doomed. Uh, but no, Jerome Powell does not want to crush portfolios. In fact, today, after he spoke, the stock market went green. The Dow went up over 100 points. Who knows where it's going to close, but he's helping the market rally today because he's using the word disinflation. That's a word that he never used before until last week when the Federal Reserve uh, met and released their 25 rate hike FOMC statement. And he held a press conference after all, afterwards. Now, what made people worry that he may hurt the market today is that the stock market rallied really big last week on Wednesday and on Thursday. And there are people saying, well, did he want the market to go up this much? Was he making a mistake the way he spoke? In fact, reporters asked him two or three times to comment on the stock market rally last week. And he didn't do it. And each time you know, they asked and he didn't, the market just ticked up a little bit more. And uh, and these are easing financial conditions when the market rallies. So, but but here he is again, disappointing the bears or the people that want him to be more hawkish. You have to understand, though, that Jerome Powell is not an interest rate hawk, but he's also not an interest rate dove. He is something else. He is a scarecrow. And when you understand that he's a scarecrow, then everything that's going on in the markets then makes sense. First of all, think about the word disinflation. Again, it's a word he never used before until last week and is using it again today. What disinflation means, and I had to look it up the first time I heard it, but what it means is the rate of inflation is coming down. It doesn't mean prices are are falling. It just means they're not going up as much. There's less uh, inflation. The inflation rate is lower than what it was. Again, doesn't mean prices are declining. It means they're just not going up fast enough. And by using that phrase like last week and now again, in the way he's describing it, he's calling that a victory. He's saying that because the rate of inflation is not as high as it was several months ago, uh, it's now around 6.3% annualized as far as uh, the last month's numbers, um, that that's a victory. That's showing an improvement, and therefore the Fed, in his words, does not have to be as hawkish, does not have to raise rates as much as they did before. However, you know, the prices aren't falling, and, and therefore the Fed is not in a position to lower interest rates. In fact, last week's uh, unemployment report demonstrates that the economy is not in a recession and doesn't need interest rate cuts. Inflation still remains the biggest problem in the economy. So what is Powell scared about? Why is he a scared crow? Because if he wasn't scared, he'd be raising rates more, faster, like he was doing last year. Instead, he's in, positioned himself to only raise rates one or two more times. He's scared that if he raised them too much, that the stock market would collapse, banks would run into trouble, and then he'd be forced to lower rates rapidly back down, who knows, to zero, like they did in 2020 or 2008, and then inflation would completely explode, even worse than it has before, and it would be a total disaster. So he's scared to raise rates you know, too much. So he's been slowing down the rate hikes, positioning himself to stop the rate hikes. However, he also knows that prices are not falling. So he's describing the situation as disinflation to set himself up to the point where he can do nothing and then say, OK, let's see if prices continue to fall. And in the speech today, that's what he said. He said he doesn't think prices are going to decline. He thinks that this disinflation, he described it as a slow process, and it's going to take the rest of the year and perhaps well into 2024. Again, he's setting the stage up to pause and position the Fed to do nothing after the next 
one or two more rate hikes. This is why the stock market is rallying because it's not afraid of a hawkish Fed. That's why you know gold got ahead of the stock market rally and began to rally um, in October. Uh, the broke through its 200-day moving average in December, and, and the stock market didn't do that until a couple of weeks ago. But stocks are breaking out left and right. This is a stock I own, Skyworks Solutions. It's a semiconductor stock. It broke the downtrend line uh, in January. And I want you to pay close attention to the indicator on the bottom of the chart. Whenever you look at other stocks you own, or you may be thinking of buying or exchange traded funds, that's a relative strength index comparing the price of Skyworks to the SP 500. It bottomed in October and it turned up in January decisively, and it's soaring today. It's above its August high, but it got above that August high at the end of January. What this means is this Skyworks stock is outperforming. The stock market is just not doing it today, up 11%, but it's been doing it now uh, for several months. It is a leadership stock. Stocks that outperform the S&P 500 are stocks that can go up 11% a day. Stocks or ETFs that lag the S&P 500 tend to crash when the S&P 500 has simple pullbacks, then not go up as much when the S&P 500 rallies. So, the way to beat the market, if you're serious about this game, you want to be beating, you want that to be your goal, is to be in stocks, sectors, exchange traded funds that are beating the market. Then you get positioned for surprising gains like Skyworks is doing today. So let's look at something in the opposite position. The ARK ETF. The ARK ETF has bounced, and it's been a fun bounce to see for people that hold it. It's gone from 30 up to 42, but notice it's broken through the 200-day moving average last week, uh, whereas Skyworks did it way before last week. And the relative strength index is still below the November high. It, you know, it, it just looks like, is this a real start of a real rally? It's still lagging the stock market. Uh, but if you look at um, oh, Southern Copper, a stock I own, look what it's done. It's been outperforming the stock market since August. It went through the 200-day moving average in November, whereas ARC just did that the other week. And then, you know, it it, it paused uh, and then broke out again. And now it's going sideways again, probably going to break out again after this sideways consolidation has worked out. So this is a stock that's gone up tremendously. And you can see how wonderful the relative strength ratio has been at the bottom. What about... Um, other popular stocks. Um, well, NVIDIA is a stock I own that's also emerged as a leadership stock. You can see that it went through the 200-day moving average in, in about a month ago. It went through it in December, then came back down. But relative strength has now cleared the August high, the June high, and the December high. It's become a leadership stock. Now, no coincidence, though, that both uh, Skyworks and NVIDIA are semiconductor stocks. And the semiconductor sector has come out as the best performing sector now in the NASDAQ. Uh, it is the tech sector helping the NASDAQ go up, whereas stocks such as, let's look at Zoom, is still a laggard. The relative strength is flatline. Zoom isn't even above the 200-day moving average. How about Coinbase? Because it's had a tremendous bounce. Well, Coinbase relative strength is still flatline, not even above the August high. So this is a stock more likely simply making a dead cat bounce than NVIDIA, which is breaking away from the market average. You want those breakaway stocks, breakaway situations. Um, so something that demonstrates why the bad stocks, um, um, GameStop is the one I'm trying to think of. Look at GameStop. GameStop did bounce from below 17 to up to 25, but it's taking the giant hit down 14% almost today. But look at relative strength. It, it, it didn't even get above the December high. This relative strength indicator is one of the most important things you can look at when you decide whether you want to buy a stock or a fund or simply hold. 
Or if you're looking for positions you, ho you hold, and you think, I need to be selling something to raise up some cash. I see something else I want to buy. Look for the laggards. Sell the laggards first. So Jerome Powell is continuing to act not hawkish, not dovish, but like a scarecrow. And that's why he's using strange phrases like disinflation to describe the economic environment. Phrases you probably never heard of before in your life until now, because now it's necessary to for him to position himself not as hawkish, not as dovish, but someone who wants to do nothing for as long as they can possibly do because they're scared to do much of anything because that's the moment we have now approached in the financial markets. So um, understanding that word disinflation and what the consequences of it now are is the key to understanding why the market's rallying now uh, when the economic situation, frankly, is still so uncertain. Uh, people have been predicting recession, but it hasn't materialized yet. Doesn't mean it can't materialize. But in the end, it is Federal Reserve policy, which is the most important macro factor underlying the financial markets. That's why when the Fed was so hawkish last year, raising rates by three-fourths of a point, everything fell. Gold fell, silver fell, stocks fell, everything fell. But then once they started to take the pedal, take their foot off the pedal and went from 75 rate hikes to 50 rate hikes, gold and silver were among the first things to come alive. The U.S. dollar peaked out, which helped push up forward markets relative to the U.S. dollar, helping U.S. investors who invest outside the United States do well. Um, and, and now the U.S. stock market has followed suit because we've gone from 50 rate hikes to 25 rate hikes to one or two more left and pause and disinflation is now the watchword as transitory was the watchword uh, in 2020. Now it is disinflation is the phrase that they're going to try to hammer in to justify doing little and then to nothing and then hoping everything turns out as good as it possibly can. So if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want more videos from me, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and then YouTube will send you an alert as soon as that next video is up.